Hi there, I just wanna do a Facebook Live and talk about prophets and signs and wonders. Uh, prophets don't just prophesy, they actually um, are anointed by the Holy Spirit to engage in signs and wonders. And so, so anyway, I just wanna take some time to talk that through as well as to process the miracle that took place uh, in Rancho Cucamonga this weekend. Uh, for those of you who, you know, this would be something you wanna hear fleshed out and I've been wanting to flesh this out because it was so powerful. Uh, so I'm gonna give you a few moments to actually hop on, let me know that you're here. Also, uh, let me know your name, let me know where you're from, uh, so that way we know where everybody is coming in from. So, so I, again, I'll give you a few minutes to do that. Uh, share it with your, your friends on their page. Hello, Alex, how are you? Thank you for coming in. Um, and be sure to share this on your page with your friends as we just really engage in, in uh, you know, just, just, just the supernatural um, as a supernatural community because that's who we are. If we're believers in Jesus, then you're automatically in a supernatural community because everything God does is supernatural. Okay, so um, I just want to make sure you have my book, um, Prophetic Secrets. It'll probably look backward to you. Um, maybe I'll throw it in the mirror so you can see it, right? Yep, you can, okay. And some of you might be saying, hey, where are you at right now? Um, I'm taking this week to, to write uh, my next book. You know, that's what writers do. They pop one out and then they're on to the next one. Uh, so I want to make sure you have my book, Prophetic Secrets. Um, you know, it's out and you can get it at jenniferevaz.com if you want a signed copy or you can go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Uh, get in all the audios. Hello, Alexandra. How are you? Good to see you. Alexandra has my book. I just saw her um, with a picture. Uh, with my book at Barnes and Noble, so thanks for sending that in, and um, uh, look forward to hearing your your uh, your comments about that. Um, also, um, prophets, discerners, uh, prophetic people, seers. We do have the um, seers and prophets online university. It begins in October, uh, but um, you know we're taking registrations now, and we're still like you know six months or six weeks out five or six weeks out and it's already looking like it's going to be the largest online mentorship I've done to date so so um, people are gathering to it and I like that because um, that means there's a lot of people we can all feed off each other and learn from each other um, you know that's really my preference is that it's very community built and community oriented so I left the link for you um, in in the title line there so check it out on everything that's going to be taking place okay so I'd love to see you as a part of that um, hello, Carmela. Yes, you got yours. Awesome. Uh, uh, glad that you got your book as well, uh, Prophetic Secrets. Again, be sure to share this uh, with your friends. And we're going to, again, talk about, uh, you know, we're talking about prophets and uh, signs and wonders ministries that are connected to prophets. Um, you know, a lot of people don't realize that prophets don't just prophesy. If you actually look in, um, like, the Old Testament, you will see that, like, Elijah and Elisha, they really engaged in miracles. Um, you know, really interesting miracles, you know, multiplication miracles. Uh, they would find lost things. Uh, that's actually one of our activations uh, when we do prophetic activations is because the Lord finds, you know, seeks and saves the lost. He, he finds lost things, you know, and we see that all throughout scripture. So one of the prophetic activations that we do is finding what's lost. And so, you know, it's really, really fun, uh, you know, as, as we put to practice the things that, that we're, you know, engaging and and coming under the anointing for and so uh, okay so you know before we went to uh, Rancho Cucamonga um, I was really fixed on this passage in Acts and I was reading it like every day um, you know and just kind of like studying and studying it and just looking at it and looking at it and looking at it not realizing what I was being set up for um, by the Holy Spirit and he gets all the glory gets all the credit and uh, and so I'm in Acts um, chapter 3 verse 7 um, actually I'll go back um, uh, I'll go back to verse 1. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. And when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them um, for some money. Uh, Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly expecting some money. Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly, 
Instantly healed and strengthened, he jumped up, stood to his feet, and began to walk. And walking, leaping, praising God, he went to the temple with them. And so as the story goes, you know, it was, it was an undeniable miracle. Um, totally undeniable. Unfortunately, the miracles got Peter and John, <laughs> Peter and John in trouble, uh, you know, with, with um, uh, you know, the religious authorities, the temple police, uh, all of that. Can you imagine temple police? That's just ridiculous. Uh, but... Um, uh, so they, they got in a lot of trouble because of this, this miracle, but, but just going back, keeping and sticking to Acts chapter 3, I was really fixed on that for like, you know, 10 days or so. I just kept reading it, kept reading it, Acts 3, Acts 4, Acts 3, Acts 4, about this undeniable miracle of the lame man who uh, was healed, and he was instantly strengthened, instantly. And I just focus on that, the instant strengthening of the body and how the Holy Spirit, you know, will instantly strengthen somebody. And so that was really my meditation um, with no foreknowledge, pre-knowledge of what was going to take place in Rancho Cucamonga. And so so when we were, you know, ministering and, and everything, I, I did notice the man, um, John, he was sitting with a couple family members, it appeared, and he was wearing dark glasses like he actually was wearing dark glasses like sunglasses in the service and he had a cane um, he just didn't he didn't look good at all you know um, and so next thing I know at the ministry time um, you know there's just some points of real points of deliverance that were taking place and at the ministry time uh, I saw him standing up for quite a while you know and honestly it's like I was you know your heart just kind of goes, oh man that's the guy he can't walk you know it's obvious because everybody's holding him up and everything um, but then all of a sudden, I just felt like it's time to go talk to this, this guy, John, and, and I went up to him, and I don't know, he looked like he was just full of faith. I mean, he just looked like he had it, you know, like there's no effort on my part, um, but you felt this power, but at the same time, the, the thing I was, I was struggling with on the way towards him, you know, um, as I was moving towards him, because I was moving through the line, the people that are up, up front, is I felt this war in the atmosphere, and I kept encouraging the people in the church to worship because I knew if we had the worship um, that the atmosphere would be filled with the presence of God. And, and there's a strength for, the, for those who are ministering. There's a strength that happens when the people will just simply worship, not, not watch, um, not, not disengage or disconnect or get on their phones. But if they will stay steady and worship, because I was feeling this war. I was like really starting to feel a warfare and I, I couldn't get um, a connection with, with you know, the Holy Spirit. And it was like all of a sudden there's, it was cutting in and cutting out. And so I kept and telling people, worship, worship. And they would, they totally would. And then all of a sudden they would kind of draw back. And I was like, you can't do that. You've got to stay in, you got to stay in, not really knowing uh, what was about ready to take place. And so, so they were doing that and it was really, you know, um, going in and going out, you know, but but they were doing that. And so finally got to the, the guy, John, and I could see once I got to him that he just had it. And I said, are you ready to get rid of your cane? And he said, yeah. So he just gave his cane away, and he just started pacing slow, but he was pacing. And I was hearing from uh, people that knew him. They're like, he, he can't do that. He doesn't do that. He hasn't done that in a couple months. So he started pacing real slow. Next thing I know, he broke out in this run, and he started running around the church. You know, and that everybody that knew him was like freaking out because they knew he could not do that. And, you know, it, and it was just so powerful um, to watch an instant. He was instantly strengthened uh, in the presence of the Lord. Exactly. You know, the concepts that I was I was engaging in uh, in the word of God prior to coming into this venue, not not knowing why. I really seriously didn't know why I didn't connect it to you. I was just fascinated with it and I was just looking at it. Um, but what I wanted to go back to was the whole thing about atmosphere. That was where I was struggling because um, the people would worship, you know, when I told them to, but something was really pulling them in almost like a, a dormant state. And it could just be like that, just, there was just a true war in the atmosphere and that was what the people were fighting too, you know, or maybe it's a lack of teaching about how to engage in worship and create an atmosphere where the glory of the Lord comes and then you don't have to strive. You don't have to strive for miracles. Um, it takes care of the warfare. It takes care of those things. So I'm not sure which one it was because that's the first time I've been to that church but they seem like a very worshipful church at the same time so so I'm, I'm kind of leaning toward 
Um, it was just warfare and people were kind of getting sucked into the warfare where, where you would disconnect and kind of disengage and not know why you're doing it or you couldn't hold on, couldn't hold on to the atmosphere maybe like you normally would. Um, but, but it's one of those things I think we need to flesh out and we need to learn and, and really be intentional about, um, cause I know as a minister, a lot of times I'll come into a service and like, I am warring, um, and I'm having to do the war, but if the other people in the room understand it, then they can, they can help. Um, again, worship is like, seems to be the one thing that will break down anything in the room that shouldn't be there. Uh, it'll also release the glory of God. Um, and worship that's like the high praise kind, the kind that's just to the Lord. It's not the kind that's, that's about me or what I need or what, what I want. You know, the stuff that's really just straight up to the Lord. It seems to just create that heaven to earth connection. And it's one of those things that I just wanted to throw out there, um, you know, because um, uh, what I'm noticing, I noticed this last year, especially pre-COVID, is the prophets started engaging some some really unusual miracles. All of a sudden, there's this breakout of miracles with prophets. Why is that? Because they're forerunning something for the body of Christ, that there's going to be a, a miracle breakout. Okay, so there's two things that are going to happen. There's a miracle breakout, and the word of knowledge is going to really um, uh, take off in the body of Christ. Words of knowledge that, like, it's going to be very normal for people to just know details. Um, you know, and just really have the mind of Christ and just know the details, um, you know, and, and it'll be, that's, that's the intention of the Holy Spirit. I've been hearing this like for months and months and months. And even before I was hearing that, I was hearing about the unusual glory of the Lord, uh, you know, where there's going to be unusual miracles. And we have to prepare ourselves for that because um, those miracles, they can, they can offend you. Um, you know, it's like, what, you know, what I was struggling with um, pre-COVID was people were getting gold on their teeth and and like people in the body of Christ they just didn't understand that miracle I, I personally don't understand it um, but that's what God was doing and they would they would like question it you know well, why would God put gold on teeth why doesn't he just put porcelain on teeth and they would literally question it as if you have a right to do that you don't have a right to do that okay God will be God and he'll do what he does and so so those are the things like you know um, if we can just stay out of a fence and let the Lord do what he, he wants to do and let God be God, okay? It, it's part of what's happening with uh, in the earth because we are going from glory to glory. Um, that's, that's prophesied in the word of God. But a lot of times we don't understand what that's going to look like or what that's going to mean. And we want to put our boxes on it and we, we want to, you know, control it. And we want to we want to call we want to call it um, you know rules on it when especially which which is crazy when you you know, you've never done a miracle and yet you want to dictate how it should be done, and so so these are the things that we want to start preparing ourselves for. You know we're getting ready to engage the the seers and prophets online university. That's going to be I mean it's that is full on you know equipping training and biblical instruction. But it's also an activation and it's a release. Okay, um, you know, and we're going to press into those things uh, because that's that's what's on God's timetable, you know, and that's what prophets do. They actually see what's up ahead and they begin to prepare the people uh, for what's ahead and prepare them, begin to communicate and speak to it and begin to call it forth, begin to equip the people. So that's what I'm doing right now is just preparing you, uh, especially those who are coming into the university, you know, that, that, you know, these are the things that are, that are you know, going to start emerging, we're going to start tapping those things. And so that's why I wanted to flesh out um, that miracle that happened on Sunday night and kind of share with you my process. You know, you know, it's a little bit hindsight. Um, you know, my process, you know, what was happening to me on the way in and what was happening to me in the service and something I noticed that was, was um, you know, what would help and what was happening to the people that was making it more difficult for me. Although I think, I really think it was more like a warfare thing, not that they were like lazy or anything like that. I really think... They just didn't know, know what to do with what was happening. Uh, but nevertheless, collectively and corporately, we had what we needed to see that miracle happen. And the Holy Spirit moved and he broke out on that guy. And guess what? The lame man was instantly strengthened and he ran around the room. That was crazy. Totally crazy. Give God all the glory. Okay. And so anyway, I just want to share all that with you and just kind of raw and real here. Um, you know, really unpolished. Uh, you know on this Facebook live and let you know how that went down um, and kind of what to expect so again get my book prophetic secrets 
um, and then also um, join the online university. All right, thanks so much. Have a good one. God bless.